Section 5 of the Ramayana by Valmiki Translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Raju from Burleson, Texas, United States Ramina45 at Hotmail.com Section 5 Book 1 Canto 16 to 20 of the Ramayana Canto 16 The Warners When Vishnu thus had gone on earth from the great king to take his birth, the self-existent lord of all addressed the gods who heard his call. For Vishnu's sake, the strong and true, who seeks the good of all of you, make helps in what to lend him aid, in forms that change at will arrayed. Of wizard skill and hero might, outstrippers of the wind in flight, skilled in the arts of counsel wise, and Vishnu spears in the bold emprise. With heavenly arts and prudence fraught, by no devices to be caught, skilled in all weapons lore and use, as they who drink the immortal juice. And let the nymphs, supreme in grace, and maidens in the minstrel race, monkeys and snakes and those who row, free spirits of the hill and grow and wandering daughters of the air in monkey from brave children bear so erst the lord of bears i shape born from my mouth as wide i gaped thus by the mighty sire addressed they all obeyed his high behest and thus begot in countless swarms brave sun disguised in sylvan forms each god each sage became a sire each minstrel of the heavenly choir each fawn of children strong and good, whose feet should roam the hill and wood. Snakes, bards, and spirits, serpents bold, had sons too numerous to be told. Bali, the woodland host who led, high as Mahendra's lofty head. Was Indra's child, the noblest fire, the sun was great, Sugriva's sire. Tara, the mighty monkey, he, was offspring of Rihaspati. Tara, the matchless chieftain boast, for wisdom of the warner host, of Gandamadan brave and bold, the father was the lord of gold. Nala, the mighty dear to fame, of skilful Viswakarma came. From Agni Nila, bright as flame, who in his splendor, might and worth, surpassed the sire who gave him birth. The heavenly Ashwins, swift and fair, were fathers of a noble pair, who Vivida and Mainda named, for beauty like their sires were famed. Varun was father of Sushan, of Sarab, he who sends the rain. Hanuman, best of monkey kind, was son of him who breathes the wind. Like thunderbolt in frame was he, and swift as Garud's self could flee. These thousands did the gods create, endowed with might that none could mate. In monkey forms that changed at will, so strong their wish the fear to kill. In mountain size, like lion stood, upsprang the wondrous multitude. Auxiliar hosts in every shape, monkey and bear and highland ape. In each the strength of might the man of his own parent god were seen. Some chiefs of one or mother's came, some of she bear and minstrel dame. Skilled in all arms in battle shock, the brandished tree, the loosened rock. And prompt should other weapons fail, to fight and slay with tooth and nail. Their strength could shake the hills of mine and rend the rooted trees in twain. Disturbed with their impetus sweep, the rivers lard the ocean deep, rend with their feet the seated ground, and pass wide floods with airy bound, or forcing through the sky their way, the very clouds by force could stay. Mad elephants that wander through, the forest wilds could they subdue, and with their furious shout could scare, dead upon the earth the birds of air. So were the sylvan chieftains formed, thousands on thousands still they swarmed. These were the leaders honored most, the captains of the honor host. And to each lord and chief and gate was monkey offspring born beside. Then by the bear's great monarch stood the other roamers of the wood, and turned their pathless homes to seek, to forest and to mountain peak. The leaders of the monkey band by the two brothers took their stand. Sugriva, offspring of the sun, and Bali, Indra's mighty one. They both endowed with Garud's might, and skilled in all the arts of fight. Wandered in arms, the forest through, and lions, snakes, and tigers slew. 
but every monkey, ape, and bear ever was Bali's special care. With his vast strength and mighty arm, he kept them from all scathe and harm. And so the earth with hill would cease was filled with mighty ones like these, of various shape and race and kind, with proper homes to each assigned, with Rama's champions fierce and strong, the earth was overspread, high as the hills and clouds a throng, with bodies vast and red. End of Canto 16 Canto 17 Precious Rings Return Now when the high-souled monarchs ride, the astromaid was finished quite, their sacrificial dues obtained, the gods their heavenly homes regained. The lofty-minded saints withdrew, each to his place with honor due, and kings and chieftains one and all, who came to grace the festival. And Dasaratha, ere they went, addressed them thus benevolent, Now may you, each with joyful heart, to your own realms, O kings, depart. Peace and good luck attend you there, and blessing is my friendly prayer. Let cares of state each mind engage, to God his royal heritage, a monarch from his throne expelled, no better than the dead is held. So he who cares for power and might, was God his realm and royal right, such care a meed in heaven will bring, better than rites and offering. Such care a king his country owes, as man upon himself bestows. When for his body he provides, raiment and every need besides, for future days should kings foresee, and keep the present error free. Thus did the king the kings exhort, they heard and turned them from the court, and each to each in friendship's bound, went forth to all the realms around. The rites were o'er, the guests were spread, the train the best of Brahmins led, in which the king with joyful soul, with his dear wives and with the whole. Of his imperial host and train, of cars and servants turned again, and as a monarch dear to fame, within his royal city came. Next precious thing, well-honoured sage, and Santa sought their hermitage, the king himself of prudent mind attended him, troops behind, and all her men the town outpoured with Saint Vasishta and their lord, high mounted on a car of state, or canopied for Santa's sate. Drawn by white oxen while a band of servants marched in either hand, great gifts of countless price she bore, with sheep and goats and gems in shore. Like beauty's self the lady shone, with all the jewels she had on, as happy in her sweet content, peerless amid the far she went. Not Queen Paolomi's self could be, more loving to her lord than she. She who had lived in happy ease, honoured with all her heart could please, while dames and kinsfolk ever wide, to see her wishes gratified, Soon as she knew her husband's will, again to seek the forest still, was ready for the hermit's court, nor murmured at her altered lot. The king attended to the wild, that hermit and his own dear child. And in the centre of a throng, of noble courtiers rode along, the sage's son had let prepare a lord within the wood and there. While they lingered blithe and gay, then duly honoured went their way. The glorious hermit Rishya's ring drew near and thus besought the king. Return, my honoured lord, I pray, return upon thy homeward way. The monarch with the waiting crowd lifted his voice and wept aloud. And with eyes dripping still to reach, of his good queens he spake this speech. Kausalya and Sumitra dear, and thou my sweet Kaikeyi here, all upon Santa's feast you gaze, the last time for a length of days, to Santa's arms the lady slept, and hung about her neck and wept, and cried, O oh, happy be the life of this great Brahman and his wife. The wind, the fire, the moon on high, the earth, the streams, the circling sky. Preserve thee in the wood, true spouse, devoted to thy husband's vows. And O oh, dear Santa, never neglect to pay the dues of meek respite. To the great saint thy husband, sire, with all observance and with fire, and sweet one pews of fault and blame, forget not thou thy husband's claim. In every change in good and ill, let thy sweet words delight him still, and let thy worship constant be, her lord is woman's deity. To learn thy welfare, dearest friend, the king will many a Brahman send. Let happy thoughts thy spirit cheer, and be not troubled, daughter dear. 
these soothing words the lady said and pressed her lips upon her head each gave with sighs her lost adieu then at the king's command withdrew the king around the hermit went with circling footsteps reverend and placed at precious ring's command some soldiers of his royal band the brahman bowed in turn and cried may fortune never leave thy side o mighty king with justice reign and still thy people slow retain he spoke and turned away his face and as the hermit went the monarch rooted to the place pursued with eyes intent but when the sage had passed from view king dasarada turned him too still fixing on his friend each thought with such deep love his breast was fraught amid his people's loud clay home to his royal seat he came and lived delighted there expecting when each queenly dame upholder of his ancient fame her promised son should bear the glorious sage his way pursued till close before his eyes he viewed sweet champa lomapal's fair town wreathed with her champak's leafy crown soon as the saint's approach he knew the king to yield him honor due went forth to meet him with a band of priests and nobles of the land hail sage he cried o joy to me what bliss it is my lord to see be with thy wife and all thy train returning to my town again thy father honored sage is well who hither from his woodland cell has sent full many a messenger for tidings both of thee and her then joyfully for due respect the monarch bade the town be decked the king and rishyas ring elate entered the royal city's gate in front the chaplain rode then loud and honored with all care by monarch and by courtier there the glorious saint abode end of canto 17 canto 18 rishyas ring's departure the monarch called a brahman near and said now speed away to kashyap's sons the mighty seer and with all reverence say the holy child he holds so dear the hermit of the noble mind whose equal it were hard to find returned is dwelling here go and instead of me do thou before that best of hermits bow that still he may for his dear son show me the favor i have won soon as the king these words had said to kashyap's son the brahman sped before the hermit low he bent and did obeisance reverence then with meek words his grace to crave the message of his lord he gave the high souled father of his pride had called thy son his rights to gain those rights are o'er the steed is slain the noble child is come again soon as the saint that speech had heard his spirit with the desire was stirred to seek the city of the king and to his court his son to bring with young disciples at his side forth on his way the hermit hied while peasants from their hamlets ran to reverence the holy man each with his little gift of food forth came the village multitude and as they humbly bowed the head what may we do for thee they said then he of brahmans first and best the gathered people thus addressed now tell me for i fain would know why is it i am honored so they to the high soul saint replied our ruler is with thee alive our master's order we fulfill o brahman let thy mind be still with joy the saintly hermit heard each pleasant and delightful word and poured a benediction down on king and ministers and town glad at the words of that high saint some servants hasten to acquaint their king rejoicing to impart the tidings that would cheer his heart soon as the joyful tale he knew to meet the saint the monarch flew the guest gift in his hand he brought and bowed before him and besought this day by seeing thee again not to have lived my life in vain now be not wroth with me i pray because i wild thy son away the best of brahmans answer made be not great lord of kings of right thy virtues have not failed to win my favor o thou pure of sin then in the front the saint was placed the king came next in joyous haste and with him entered his abode mid glad acclaim as on they rode to greet the sage the reverend crowd raised suppliant hands and humbly bowed then from the palace many a dame following well dressed santa came stood by the mighty saint and cried see honor source thy son's dear bride the saint who every virtue knew 
his arms around his daughter threw, and with a father's rapture pressed the lady to his wondering breast. Arising from the saint's embrace, she bowed her low before his face, and then with palm to palm applied, stood by her hermit father's side. He for his son, as laws ordained, performed the right that frees from stain, and honoured by the wise and good, with him departed to the wood. End of Canto 18 Canto 19 The Birth of the Princess the season's sixth and rapid flight had circled since the glorious ride. Eleven months had passed away. Twas Chaitra's ninth returning day. The moon within that mansion shone, which Aditi looks kindly on. Raised to their apex in the sky, five brilliant planets beamed on high. Shone with the moon in Cancer's sign, Rihaspati with light divine, Kausalyas bore an infant blessed, with heavenly marks of grace impressed. Rama, the universe lord, a prince by all worlds adored. Now glory queen Kausalya won, reflected from her splendid sun. So Aditi shone more and more, the mother of the gods and she, the king of immortals bore, the thunder-wielding deity. The lotus-eyed, the beauteous boy, he came fierce Ravan to destroy. From half of Vishnu's figure born, he came to help the worlds forlorn. And Queen Kaikeyi bore a child of trust and valor, Bharat styled, with every princely virtue blessed, one fourth of Vishnu manifest. Sumitra, too, a noble pair called Lakshman and Satrubna bore, of high emprise, devoted true, shares in Vishnu's essence too. Neet Pushya's mansion, Minas sign, was Bharat's born of soul benign. The sun had reached the crab at morn when Queen Sumitra's babes were born. What time the moon had gone to make his nightly dwelling with the snake, the high-souled monarch's concerts bore at different times those glorious four. Like to himself and virtuous bright, at Prostapada's fourfold light, then danced the nymph's celestial throng, the minstrel raised their strain, the drums of heaven pealed loud and long, and dovers came down in rain. Within Ayodhya blith and gay, all kept the joyous holiday. The spacious choir, the ample road, with mimes and dancers, overflow, and with the voice of music rang, where minstrels played and singers sang, and shone a wonder to behold with a dazzling show of gems and gold. Nor did the king's largest pair for minstrel driver bar to share. Much wealth the Brahmans bore away, and many thousand dined that day. Soon as each babe was twelve days old, it was time the naming right to hold. When Saint Sista, wrapped with joy, assigned a name to every boy. Rama to him the high-souled heir, Bharat to him Kaikeyi bath. Of Queen Sumitra one fair son, was Lakshman and Satrupna one. Rama his sight's supreme delight, like some proud banner cheered his sight. And to all creatures seemed to be the self-existent deity. All heroes first in holy lore, to all mankind great love they bore. Fair stores of wisdom all possessed, with princely graces all were blessed. But mid those youths of high descent, with lordly light preeminent, like the full moon unclouded shone, Rama the world's dear paragon. His best the elephant could gain, urged the fleet car, the charger ride. A master of bowman's skill, joying to do his father's will. The world's delight and darling he, loved Lakshman best from infancy. And Lakshman, lord of lofty fate, upon his elder joy to wait, striving his second self to please, with friendship sweet observances, his limb the hero never would rest, unless the couch his brother pressed. Except beloved Rama share, he could not taste the meal prepared. When Rama, pride of Raghu's race, sprang on his steed to urge the chase, behind him Lakshman loved to go, and guard him with his trusty bow. As Rama was to Lakshman dear, more than his life and ever near. So fond, Shatrupna prized above, his very life his brother's love. Illustrious heroes, nobly kind, in mutual love they all combined, and gave their royal sire delight, with modest grace and warrior might. Supported by the glorious four, shone Dasaratha more and more. As though with every guardian god, who keeps the land and skies, the father of all creatures trod, the earth before men's eyes. End of Canto 19 Canto 20 Vishwamitra's Visit 
Now Dasaradas pious mind, meet wedlock for his son's design, with priests and friends the king began to counsel and prepare his plan. Such thoughts engaged his bosom, when, to see Ayodhya's lord of men, a mighty saint of glorious fame, the hermit Viswamitra came. For evil friends that roam by night disturbed him in each holy rite, and in their strength and frantic rage assailed with witcheries the sage. He came to seek the monarch's aid, to guard the rites the demon stayed, unable to a close to bring one unpolluted offering. Seeking the king in his dire strait, he said to those who kept the gate, Haste orders to your master run, and say that here stands Gadi's son. Soon as they heard the holy man, to the king's chamber swift they ran, with minds disordered all, and spurred, to wildest zeal by what they heard. On to the royal hall they sped, there stood and lowly bowed the head, and made the lord of men aware that the great saint was waiting there. The king with priest and peer arose, and ran the sage to meet, as Indra from his palace goes, Lord Brahma's self to greet. When glowing with celestial light, the pious hermit was in sight, the king whose mien his transport showed, the honoured gift for guests bestowed. Nor did the saint that gift despise, offered as holy text advice, he kindly asked the earth's great king how all with him was prospering. The son of Kausik bade him tell if all in town and field were well, all well with friends and kith and kin, and royal treasure stored within. Do all thy neighbours own thy sway, thy foes confess thee yet. Dost thou continue still to pay to gods and men each debt? Then he of hermits first and best, Vasishta with a smile, addressed, and asked him of his welfare too, showing him honour as was due. Then with the sainted hermit all, went joyous to the monarch's hall, and sat them down by due degree, each one of rank and dignity. Joy filled the noble prince's breast, who thus bespoke the honoured guest. As amidst by a mortal found, as rain upon the thirsty ground, as to an airless man a son, born to him of his precious one, as gain of what we sorely miss, as sudden dawn of mighty bliss, so is thy coming here to me, all welcome mighty saint to thee. What wish within thy heart hast thou? If I can please thee, tell me how. Hail, saint, from whom all honours flow, worthy of all I can bestow. Blessed is my birth with fruit today, nor has my life been thrown away. I see the best of Brahman race, and right to glorious mom gives place. Though holy sage in days of old, among the royal saints enrolled, didst penance glorified within, the Brahman caste high station win. It's meet and right in many a way, that I to thee should honour pay. This seems a marvel to mine eyes, all sin thy visit purifies. And I by seeing thee, O sage, have reaped the fruit of pilgrimage. Then say what thou wouldst have me do, that thou hast sought this interview. Favoured by thee, my wish is still, O hermit, to perform thy will. Nor needest thou at length explain the object that thy heart would gain. Without reserve I grant it now, my deity, O Lord, art thou. This glorious hermit far renowned, with highest fame and virtue crowned, rejoiced these modest words to hear, delightful to the mind and ear. End of section 5, Canto 16 to 20, Book 1 of the Ramayana. Recording by Raju from Burleson, Texas, United States. Ramina45 at hotmail.com.